learned already that names don't constitute knowledge, but the knowing the name of something. That's caused me a certain trouble since, because I refuse to learn the name of anything. So when someone comes in and says, uh, you got any explanation for the Fitzclonan experiment? I says, what, what, what's that? He says, you know, that the long-lived K meson disintegrates into two pies. Oh, oh, yes, now I know. But I never know the names of things. What he forgot to tell me was that the knowing the names of things is useful if you want to talk to somebody else. <laughs> so you tell him what you're talking about. But the basic principle of knowing about something rather than just knowing its name is something that you stuck to, is it? Yes, of course. It's, well, you have to learn. These are kind of disciplines in the field of science that you have to learn. That to know when you know and when you don't know and what it is you know and what it is you don't know. And it's, uh, you've got to be very careful not to confuse yourself. Hi guys, how are you? Mind this one, Titanium. Welcome back to Real Macro Economics and Investing. Patreon.com slash Real Macro and Patreon.com slash BKC. Okay, so I want to do this video and I'm going to share this with everybody. Usually I keep this stuff for my subscribers, but in this case I think it's it's important because we are, we have become the children of the magenta. Okay, what does that mean? Well, I'm going to explain that to you and it's going to I'm going to start off with aviation, and then I'm going to translate that into real macroeconomics uh, and investing. Magenta in an aircraft is when the flight management guidance computer is managing the aircraft. The pitch, the power, roll, okay, it takes it from point A to point B. And when it turns magenta and you look at your instruments, the airplane is doing everything. You don't do everything, anything. It descends, it climbs, it does everything. It turns. And the industry came up with all this automation to make flying safer, okay? So in doing so, they have created a drug-resistant pilot <laughs> or a virus, okay? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a flying-resistant pilot. Why? Because we no longer as pilots have to fly an aircraft. When the magenta the children of the magenta when the magenta goes away you know what happens hardly any of the new pilots know how to fly why because they don't do it every day when i first started flying i didn't have a uh, an autopilot i didn't even have flight directors i didn't even have a yaw dampener a yaw dampener is what keeps the airplane from going back and forth and touch rolling and so forth you don't need to know that Okay, my radar barely could see five five miles because the seal in front of the nose was broken and, and water would leak inside and it was rendering it useless. If I could see five miles, whew, I was lucky. Okay, so everything I had to do manually and I did it every day and I was so good at it that I could read a newspaper, drink my coffee and fly the airplane and know exactly where I am at all times because that was my job. Today, these new pilots, and I'm not blaming them, they don't have the same skill sets. They don't, they, they, they're not trained in that manner. They're trained like monkeys. Monkey do, monkey see. Monkey see, monkey do, actually. <laughs> so what, what has happened? Right? A lot of companies don't even allow their pilots to turn off the autopilot. Okay? And if they do, and if they do, everything every single little thing is recorded and if they deviate just a little bit because they're humans and not computers if they don't behave exactly like a computer they will be called into the safety office and they're going to say well what happened here what are you doing okay so it's greatly discouraged to be a pilot now, i'm going to play this video for you and this is this is an old video and i i i was trained to fly with old timers uh, Guys that were phenomenal pilots with great skills, and, and like like the gentleman in the in the video, uh, who's an instructor, and just listen to what he's saying. And we're talking now. This has got to be I don't know 20, 25 years ago, but let's listen to uh, what he's saying here. The red box on this slide is not in your operating manuals. This red box really is from Cecil to you. What we're trying to say here, I think what Cecil's trying to say here, is that we have to go back. 
Back when I started 25 years ago with American Airlines, I was an engineer on the engineer seat for low seven or eight years, and every time I came back here to recurrent training, I sat in that engineer seat and I listened to those check airmen telling those pilots, fly the plane first, fly the plane first, and the pilots did. They flew the plane first. But then about 15 years ago, we started to become more and more automated in our cockpits. And as the level of automation increased more and more, we started talking about pushing buttons up here on AFDS mantle or typing the typewriters down here, okay, to make the airplane's flight path adjust. Because we were being told by the industry that we were to become automation managers. But the accident history of the first six years of the 90s clearly shows automation managers plugging themselves into the ground all over this planet. We are not automation managers. We are captains and pilots. And by our aviator skills, we are to ensure the vertical and lateral pass of these planes at all times. We will use the wonderful tools of automation that have been provided to us to help us with that task. But when the automation is not maintaining the intended flight path, we will turn it off and maintain the path by our skills. As an example of approach parameters, if you're coming down a non-precision approach and the autopilot's engaged and you're in the last segment of this and you're in vertical speed and it becomes apparent that your airplane for some reason or another is going to go through MDA. MDA is minimum decision altitude. Okay, you're really close to the ground. If you can't see the runway, you got to go around. If you use the autopilot, by the time the autopilot starts leveling off the aircraft, you're going to be eating dirt. Okay, so what he's saying here is don't sit here and try to level off the airplane with automation, right? Just level off the airplane or go around. Okay, don't hit the ground. Is it time to push altitude hold? It's not, is it? It's time to go click, 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 boom, because you can stop it at MDA. The autopilot can. Or how about... So, how does this relate to economics and investing? Now, let me show you something. We have more people working today than ever before in history. Okay? The population has grown. There's more people working than ever before. It's 152 million as of November 2019. All right? So, you would think that GDP would be just exploding, right? It would just keep growing and growing and growing. But that's not the case. And that's okay, right, because the, the growth of the population is starting to, to slow, okay? When you take a look at labor force participation, between tw ages 25, 54, uh, below 25, a lot of kids are going to college, university, whatever, more than ever before. So you really don't want to look at that because you, you, you cannot judge them as you would in, in, the, in the 40s and 50s and 20s and 2010 and so forth okay so when you take a look at it we we've we reach an all-time high of about 84 something and we are about 82.6 now so it's one percent difference it's not a whole big big deal right but it did go sideways and it did start to decline right now this is about as max employment as you're going to get this is it, more or less. Okay, you can get maybe one or two percent more, but you're not going to get a whole lot more in, uh, output out of the economy than what you're getting right now. Here's another way to look at it, and this is only the red line, by the way, is is federal debt to GDP. Okay, what you'll see is that we got a very big spike debt to GDP from 60 percent all the way to 108 percent. So that means that we are pumping in more and more and more dollars and getting less and less and less GDP. Despite the fact that we have more people working than ever before, and despite the fact that we are uh, the prime age labor force 25 to 54 is just about maxed out. Now, when you look at total debt, which is private and public, and you combine it together, 
right? You're going to see this sharp rise. And we're about, I don't know, $250 trillion worldwide of, um, of, uh, of debt. And global GDP is roughly $84 trillion or something like that. Okay. So you look at the, the U.S., right, and it's exploded. It's absolutely exploded since 2008, which means there's um, an enormous amount of money floating around every which way and yet GDP is declining let me show you how bad it's declining and here it is okay here it is we started out back in the 60s all the way up here and then started to decline so we are creating more money and getting less GDP every single year every single year gets getting worse and worse and worse and worse why? Why is this? Because there are people out there that believe that you can print value for a currency. Okay? You cannot do that. You can't print production. You can't print people working hard and, you know, being an entrepreneur, risk-taking, uh, and creating uh, jobs, and creating economic growth, and creating wealth. You can't do it. No government can just print that. You can print little pieces of paper, little digits on a computer. You can do all that stuff. It's not You can't multiply wealth by dividing it, right? You can create all the little papers you want, all the little digits that you want. And I'm not saying you shouldn't sometimes. It's not, it's not the point. But when you do it excessively, you're not going to create more GDP, more wealth. It can't be done. No government can multiply wealth by dividing it. It's not possible, okay? So this is why you see what you are seeing. And yet, and yet, we have the MMT crowd, we have the socialists, the Soviet sympathizers saying, no, that's the way it works. We just don't have enough dollars. There's a cash famine. So what, what have we become? What has everybody become? We have become children of the magenta children of the magenta that as long as government keeps printing money QEing, repos lowering interest rates doing whatever the hell they're doing let the government or you know put everything on autopilot and we'll just sit back and we'll expect the government to give us a job we'll expect the government to give us free health care and the, the government will fix uh, global warming by uh, printing money the government is going to control wages, the government is going to control jobs, the government is going to control and give us free housing, they're going to control rents, they're going to control all these things. This is, we are children of the magenta. That's what we have become. It is no longer our responsibility to go out, educate ourselves, do the absolute best that we can for ourselves, for our families, okay, and, and, and create... Uh, wealth for ourselves for our nation no 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 that that's gone forget it <laughs> we don't want pilots that can fly we want automation managers right we want people just to consume and as long as you keep giving them dollars they will consume and therefore we're going to have a great economy except that the mathematics doesn't work gdp keeps crashing relative to the amount of dollars that we create. And again, I am not a gold bug. I was completely against gold bugs, right? Why? Because the financial uh, institutions had collapsed thanks to FAS 157, okay? And then we had to get everybody back to work. In that case, just like Keynes says, right, if you need to stimulate the economy, and it's a one-time stimulus, it's not, a, it's not a forever thing, right? If you need to do it, do it. Absolutely, right? And then once you get to full employment, then you got to do the opposite. And that's what Keynes was saying. And I'm, I'm with him. I agree. And I'm all for social safety nets. What good does it do anybody if we go into a recession and now you have sick people and you have people that can't feed themselves, that can't educate themselves, and they're a disaster? You think the economy is going to recover as fast? Absolutely not. I am, I agree. There should be social safety nets. We should not allow children to, to starve. We should not, all those things. But you gotta be able to afford them. And to afford them, 
okay that means the production must equal at least at least the amount of money that is being created in the system always absolutely not not the way it works economics is not perfect right there'll be some times that you're going to have to uh to print more money than uh, that exists, but you're not really printing counterfeit money because you have created wealth. Your economy has created wealth, and it's that na national wealth that the government can borrow against. Borrow, okay? They're not they're not creating value. They're not uh, producing wealth. They're just borrowing it, okay? By issuing bonds, they borrow that money to spend it back into the economy to stimulate the economy. But that is an emergency me measure. It's not a, whoo, we can just have whatever the fuck we want for free measure. You can't do that to eternity because you're going to end up exactly as we have ended up, where we just produce more and more and more and more dollars, but getting less and less and less GDP. Here's another way to look at it. Back in 1950, we used to produce for every, and this is, uh, this is real GDP with M2. Okay, the money stock. We used to produce $11 of GDP for every $1 of M2 money that was created. Okay? You know what it is today? Today it's at 132. And this this goes only to uh, uh, 2018. There's another one it's, right now it's at 128. Okay? This is annual. I can change it to um, quarterly. The point is made. You're getting, for every dollar that is created of M2, you are getting $1.32 of GDP. And you used to get $11. So we have a cash famine. This is the problem? That we just don't have enough dollars? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. But that's what the MMTers would tell you, right? We have a cash famine. We don't have enough dollars. We are children of the magenta. That's what's going on here. All political parties are telling you the same bullshit. We just need to print, print, print more. Okay? More tax cuts. We need job guarantees, free housing, free health care, free education, free energy, free rents whatever the hell they're saying and that mathematics doesn't work because no government can print value for a currency no government can multiply wealth by dividing it into little digits the mathematics on this is clear don't come after me I didn't create the mathematics okay if, if you don't believe in math, then, you know, that's a different story. You're a flat earther. <laughs> but this free stuff, this MMT stuff is garbage. So where's all those dollars? Where, where are all those dollars going, right? They're supposed to create more economic growth, more GDP, more wealth. But it doesn't. It doesn't. Here's GDP on the left side. It's grown since 1985, whatever. It's grown by 409%, while the NASDAQ has grown by 6,481%. Uh, what's, what's the problem there? Did all this extra dollars that we create uh, produce more wealth, more GDP, more prosperity? That money ended up in savings, okay? Those savings are with the top 5%. And savers, they're not going to spend it, right? What they're going to do is they're going to take those dollars and they're going to invest them. And when they invest them, stocks, bonds, real estate, commodities, and so forth, you will end up with a savings bubble. And that savings bubble is going to blow out asset price inflation. And what MMT and all the other smart people that are telling you, yeah, you know, you deserve this for free and that for free. We'll just print. Don't worry how we're going to pay for it. Their debt is our savings. Their uh, red ink is our blank ink and all this bullshit. 
okay the reality of it is that all those dollars end up with a top five percent and the top five percent are going to take those dollars and they're going to pump them into asset prices and then and then you know what's going to happen when trillion dollar deficits are not enough we're going to end up doing qe what is qe well we're going to take bonds that are illiquid and we're going to get the fed to buy them in the open market and we're going to exchange those bonds for dollars and then those dollars can float anywhere they want in the, in the in the system they can go buy more bonds at higher prices lowering interest rates they can go out and buy stocks push up the price of stocks and that's economic growth according to MMTers Trump is the biggest MMTer there is tax cuts that's supposed to create economic growth it didn't it created more stock buybacks it created higher stock prices every single day we go out as children of the, of, of the magenta if the market goes down one percent god forbid this is a fucking outrage we need to pump it up give us some tweets and we get the tweets and the market goes up if it's not trump it's going to be the ecb if it's not the ecb it's going to be china if it's not china it's going to be the fed we have banks that are insolvent and then they have to go to the fed to borrow repos not a problem don't worry about it we're not going to tell you the names of the banks okay we just don't have enough money liquidity in the system we need more because we're children of the magenta we've got to give the the banks more cash and they'll put up their assets which are what the bonds that they they hold right the mortgage-backed securities that they hold right and we need to give them more cash so they can go out and buy more assets and this is economic prosperity supposedly we need more tax cuts more repos more qe more deficits first two months of 2020 which is no october november we i think it's 350 billion dollars uh in deficits which is about 50 billion than, more than last year okay we have now increased the amount of repos and it's going to go from 300 billion to half a trillion which was supposed to be temporary starting back in september right it wasn't very temporary it's not qe right but now we're going to go up to by the end of the year half a trillion in repos we've lower interest rates from 250 all the way down to 175 market is even lower and that's economic prosperity and this is a public purpose this we're taking care of people we're creating we're, we're multiplying wealth by dividing it think about that and then you got idiots like logan me right with his stupid calls that oh look at the bears <laughs> they're so stupid the real economy is kicking the crap out of the uh, out of the bears but i don't talk about stocks just like trump doesn't look at stocks right sure if we get bernie in office let him start not paying for it and giving out free stuff for everybody we're all going to become rich think about that we're going to have more money to spend because we're going to have higher quality health insurance by printing more money and less and less gdp as a result gdp will continue to crash as a percentage of debt we the 95 percent are going to be able to save newsflash 70 percent of gdp is consumption in the u.s if we start to save 95 percent start to save okay then they're not consuming if they're not consuming the economy crashes okay gdp falls 
So what's the solu what's the mathematical solution that MMT and Sanders and all these other people are coming up with? Garbage, garbage, absolute garbage. You cannot save and consume at the same time. You can't do it. That's like saying, well, I'm not going to sit in the shade and I'm not going to sit in the sun. Well, where the fuck are you going to sit? Well, I don't know, but it won't be the sun in the shade. Think about that. Okay. And again, I'm the least political person you'll ever meet. Back in 2010 when I was saying, you know, no, we have to deficit spend and QE is not hyperinflation. Okay. That we need to get people back to work. We have 10% unemployment. Oh, you socialist. You love the bankers. <laughs> Today, when I'm like, hey, we're at full employment. We can't be printing and giving out free shit because it's not working. Can't multiply your fucking wealth by dividing it. Now, oh, oh, you're a Wall Street guy. Oh, you're a conservative. Oh, they've been telling us this bullshit for years. It's a lie. The government prints dollars first. We have become children of the magenta. I'm telling you, you don't want to believe it? Fine, but we have become children of the magenta. It's the government that has to give us everything. It's the government that has to pump trillions of dollars. It's the government that has to tweet every fucking day. Oh, we're close to a trade deal. Oh, we're close to a trade deal. Boom, market up. Boom, close to a trade. Boom, market goes up. Market went down half, half a percent. This is an outrage. Where's Trump? Where's where's Cudlow? <laughs> Jeez, help us. Up, oh, we're close to a trade deal. Up, oh, okay, market's back up. We are lowering interest rates. We are, the repo market is increasing. We're going to take it into 2020. It's temporary, but not really. It's not QE. We need more QE. Children of the magenta. That's what we have become. We have idiots like Logan running around saying, oh, look at the great economy that we have. Everything is great. Everything is fantastic. Can't wait to vote Bernie in. Give us free stuff. More money printing. Instead of one trillion, we're going to go to two trillion and three trillion and four trillion per year. And that's going to boost economic growth and wealth because we're going to multiply wealth by dividing little digits, little pieces of paper. Here's the MMT solution. You have two cows. You're going to get 300 people to milk that cow. You're going to call it a job guarantee. You're going to claim full employment, high productivity. This for the public purpose. Print endless of trillions of dollars. Okay. Oh, and by the way, the 300 people that are milking the cow, they have no skill. They're entitled to this. Okay. No, no skill on how to milk a cow. So imagine how productive we're going to be on milking two cows, huh? Mm. We've multiplied wealth. MMT is Warren Mosler, right here. This is the way the economy works. The Fed creates dollars, it goes into the banking system, and then it comes to you. See? It's that easy. Why the fuck do you guys go to work? Why do you go to work? Vote for Bernie, vote for Mosler, for Kelton. Sit home. Let the Fed print the money. Let it go into the banking system and then to you. Nice little checks right here. Don't go to work. Just sit home. This is the insanity. We are children of the magenta. I'm telling you. This is the way these people are behaving that the, that the real economy works. This, this is what they believe. This is what they're telling people and they're, and they're believing it. Oh, <laughs> cringy. And I'm the only idiot <laughs> that marked it down because it doesn't work like that. You cannot create value for a currency. No government can. Can't just print that shit. You got to go out and work, produce, solve a problem. Get somebody else to give you enough money that you're going to produce a profit because it's worth it. If it doesn't produce a profit, nobody wants it. Got to go. Sorry. You don't have any job skills? You don't have a job? Ugh, sorry. And despite all of that, despite all of that, we have 3.4% unemployment. Okay. 82% prime age labor force uh, participation. More people than ever are working.
today. Wages are rising in real terms. Inflation is like 2%. Wages are rising like 4%. Okay. Uh, we have more jobs than people looking for jobs. Jolts. Think about that. We had like 7.3, 7.4 at one point. A million jobs opening. Okay, about a million, million plus more than people looking for jobs. Quits. Jumping. Here it is. Quits. Okay. 2.2%. That's the rate. Think about that. So if, if you're thinking that, oh, oh, we don't have a living wage. We don't have a living wage. You're going to try to sell me that bullshit? Okay. <laughs> Go somewhere else. That, that's not going to fly here. If there wasn't a living wage, okay, debt would not be, household debt would not be falling. Okay. If the uh, Fed only bailed out the banksters, that evil Fed, okay, then debt servicing will not be at historical lows. So, as a, as a percentage of disposable income, okay? You can't, you can't make shit up as you go just because it f sounds good. The data doesn't support what you're saying. It's garbage. Don't tell me that, oh, nobody has a living wage. No, 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 no. You can't pay down debt. Grow the economy, okay? Go out and consume 70% of GDP. Create more jobs because there's uh, more people consuming. Can't do all these things if you don't have a living wage. That doesn't work like that. Sorry. If people needed a job and didn't have a living wage, they wouldn't be quitting. You know who who quits when they, when they're secure, when they have a job and and they're like, hey, I can go out and get a better job. There's more jobs than people looking for jobs. Fuck it, I'm quitting. I don't care. I'll go somewhere else. I'll get hired in an instant. Right? The economy is not going to get much better. You're not going to produce more wealth because you're going to print more money. That's what I keep telling you. We are children of the magenta. We are at full employment, doing just about as good as we can, okay? And still, and still, it, the GDP is not growing. We are going sideways. It's, it's, it's weak, right? But yet, the stock market goes up every single day. Bond market keeps going up every single day. There's a complete fucking disconnect between the productive economy of the 95% and the top 5% unproductive savers. And as long as the government keeps printing more money, those dollars are going to go through the productive economy and they're going to end up with the top 5% and you're going to create more inequality when Sanders and everybody else and MMT and uh, all these other uh, crazies who are going to give you all this free stuff, okay, are telling you, oh, inequality is the problem and we're going to fix it by printing more money. No, you're going to give them more money. Them meaning the 5%, top 5%. Because no profit can ever possibly exist. It, can't, it cannot happen. There, there can never be more profit, okay, unless the household, the 95%, have an income and they save. If you have an income, you must save that income in order for a profit to exist. And that profit goes to the top 5%. That's who gets to save the deficits. Therefore, it is imperative that the savers, those that make the profit savings, are the ones that keep funding the productive economy and not deficits, especially when we are at max employment. Because if they don't, if you don't have an ecosystem feedback loop, between the productive and unproductive portions of the private sector, okay, where that money flows through household savings to corporate uh, top five percent profit savings. If you don't, if that if that doesn't keep going around in a circle, in an ecosystem feedback loop, and you just have the the government doing all the work, pumping, 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 pumping more in trillions then you're going to end up with more and more and more inequality. That's the way it works. And then if you're going to try to sell me this other stupid MMT uh, bullshit, that, oh, you just don't understand. We're just going to spend it differently. 
that's all. And then magically, guess what? Those dollars are not going to flow to the top 5%. How? I don't know. They just won't. I guess nobody's going to go out and buy an Apple iPhone or whatever. Go to Verizon and Comcast or whatever. It's not going to happen. You know what's going to happen? The 95% are going to save. But, oh, wait, (laughs) 95% are the ones that are consuming. So they can't save it. And if they don't save it, they cannot buy the bonds from the government so they can keep deficit spending. Okay? So you got you got a cognitive dissonance going on here. You cannot save and consume at the same time. Not possible. If you can't save, you can't buy the bonds. If you can't buy the bonds, then you can't deficit spend. So how are you going to have all this free stuff? Mathematics doesn't work. But yet, we are children of the magenta. Just waiting for government to print it up and give it to us. Oh, but Nick, you don't understand. No, no, you don't understand. MMT is a description. It's a description of the monetary system. Really? How can a MMT describe a monetary system that does not include hard work, profit, entrepreneurship, risk-taking, efficiency, What are you talking about? What in the world are you talking about? A description. Value? Not included. What do you mean value? Value, uh, you just tax people and it's value. Really? So why the fuck do we go to work? Why don't we just stay home? Taxes. Give me more money, more tax credits, according to them, than what you tax back. And then this way, I don't have to go to work. I don't have to educate myself I don't have to take risks I just go on fucking vacation you can just print up little dollars from the Fed put it to the bank and the bank gives it to me (laughs) this is the insanity children of the magenta pilots that don't know how to fly airplanes citizens that don't believe they have to work to create a better economy Again, I, I, I don't know how to, how uh, how else to explain it to you that that's not the way it works. And the more people believe that it is the way it works, that the Fed can just print value, print production, and just gives it to the bank, and the bank gives it to you, and then we can all be richer. We can consume and save sit in the sun and not sit in the sun not sit in the shade sit somewhere else and you have this cognitive dissonance where you don't understand how real economics works then you know we're just going to make things very very bad for ourselves go and teach your your kids don't worry about it government is going to take care of you the government is going to give you health care the government is going to give you a house the government is going to give you a job the government is going to give you, it's going to set your wages. You can take those wages, go to the bank, borrow, get a credit card. Okay. Government is going to create uh, all the wealth there is in the world by printing money. And you don't need to worry about it. You don't even have to go to college. And if you do go to college, it'll be for free. So just go play around over there if you want. Go to the frat parties. And then uh, when you don't graduate, don't worry about it. Government will take care of it. Teach your your kids this. We'll see what kind of economy we're going to have. What a beautiful socialist paradise the U.S. will become. And how evil capitalism is. Now we're sitting here giving the lifetime awards to inexperienced young girls who are autistic and just cry more than everybody else. And this is the time life person of the year because we are children of the magenta. The more you cry and whine and bitch, the more we're gonna recognize you. And go and teach your kid when he he's old enough to understand, five, six years old. Do you wanna be a boy? Do you wanna be a girl? You wanna be a knit, you can be a knit too. 
go, 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 go. That has nothing to do with economics, of course, but it does have to do with being children of the magenta. We have lost our minds and believe in crazy things. Mathematics don't apply. Okay? So, go and support MMT. Go and support Sanders. Go and support more money printing. Let uh, Trump keep tweeting every time it market is down 1% and uh, algos run out to start buying with borrowed money from the Fed pushing up prices killing uh, any uh, any chance of a of a normal market listen t- to the people like Logan who are telling you oh the market the real economy is doing great the real economy is just exploding when GDP is barely making 2% and we're printing trillions of dollars, we're printing what, 4.5% of GDP and GDP growth is barely 2%. Yep. We're getting it done. Look at this. The Fed plans to double repo market intervention to avoid a cash crunch. Because $5 trillion of stock buybacks were not enough. $4 trillion in QE, not enough. Trillion dollar deficits, not enough. Okay. And we made a deal. The deal is soybeans and pigs. And now world trade is going to improve. Yes. Children of the magenta. Yes. Believe in this stuff. This is fantastic. Look at this. Wow, getting very close to a big deal with China. They won it, and so do we. Right? Market straight up next day. I mean, instantly. Right? And uh, this is the way it works. That's the way. Oh, look. Aramco. The valuation now is $2 trillion. Woo! Where'd that money come from? Eurozone? Oh, yeah. You know, the industrial production is just fucking collapsing, but don't worry about that. That's that's economic stuff. We don't care about the, these things. These things are they're just annoying. Inflation, oh, about 2%. Don't worry about these things. Forget about it. Okay? Here's what we got to worry about. White House, trade advisor Navarro, says China trade trying to shape narrative and affect futures markets. Really? What the fuck do you think Trump tweets are doing every single day? Trying to pump the market up every time it comes down 1%. Again, and I'll close it with this. We used to get in the 50s $11 of GDP growth for every M2 dollar that was created. Okay? And today we get $1.32. And... Warren Mosler is telling everybody we have a cash famine at $250 trillion of debt. Think about it. That's it, guys. Take care. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Well, you know, the doctor, doctor guys are going to tell you there's like seven levels of automation or something in our airplanes. It gives me a headache. I'm kind of a simple guy. I'm going to suggest to you that there's basically three levels of automation in our planes. The lowest level of automation, you might call manual, is when you're hand flying the airplane, the throttles and the controls, and by the inputs and cues that you're getting from your instrumentation and your outside outside visual cues, you are determining the vertical and lateral path of this plane by flying it. The next highest level of automation would be when you have an autopilot engaged and you're using the flight guidance system in your airplane to tell that autopilot what to do with the plane's flight path for short periods of time. You know, like flight level change, vertical speed, altitude hold, heading select, that stuff. And then the highest level of automation is when we have an autopilot engaged and we're using a flight management computer to tell that autopilot what to do with the flight path of this plane for hours and hours. Low, medium, high. Now the question becomes, which is the appropriate level for the task at hand? Mike on. 
You know, you could say all this automation was put in our two-man airplanes to reduce the workload on the two-man crew. That's why it's in there. And you could say that to go up a level of automation will reduce workload, and that would be true in many scenarios. You know, FMC hooked up to a autopilot's a great workload reducer for crossing the North Atlantic. You can also say, however, that going down a level in automation will reduce workload in certain scenarios. And as we study the accident history, what we find in the vast majority of the cases is this, that the crew, the two-man crew, has lost situation awareness. Well, how'd that happen? Well, the two-man crew became task-saturated. Well, how'd they become task-saturated? In the vast majority of the accidents, they became task-saturated because they were trying to operate at too high a level of automation and a rapidly changing flight path requirement. Did you hear what I just said? They needed to drop down a level in order to maintain their situation awareness, they had to reduce workload. As an example, as an example, suppose uh, you're coming in on a star somewhere. Let's say in an FMC airplane to start with. We'll deal with flight guidance too in a minute. It, we're coming in an FMC airplane uh, on a star someplace. And we probably had that star arrival all loaded up in that computer for an hour or more. And everything's going just as planned, and we're in LNAV and VNAV, and everything's going just great. And we're stroking down the star, and as long as everything goes as planned, it all works perfect. But let's say as you're coming through around 20,000 feet or so, the controller calls you up and says, American umpty ump, change your arrival. I want you to turn left now, head so-and-so, descend to maintain such-and-such -such an altitude, intercept the so-and-so uh, radial of the such-and-such -such VOR for the arrival to umpty ump runway. At this point, is it time to go? <laughs> or is it time to drop down a level? It's time to drop down a level, isn't it? I mean, what did he just say? He said, head so-and-so, heading select, so-and-so. Descend to such and such an altitude, set it, flight level change. Now the plane's going where he asked us to go. And our head's up, and we know it is. And then he said, intercept so-and-so radial. Well, tune it in, identify it, present it, because you have to. That's given work. American Airlines says we must have that raw data presented to do this stuff. That's a given amount of work. It must be done. Now, if you have time later to go type it all in and get it full up and you wish to and then hook up, fine. But it shouldn't be your initial move. Because what happens if you make that initial move? Well, two things happen. First off, the airplane is not going where you want it to go yet. Second, if one guy's typing and changing flight path, the other guy must check it, or gal. Let there be no doubt. We do not change the flight paths in these FMCs without both pilot agreeing that the new flight path is correct. The reason that is, is because these FMCs are not error resistant. They're not even close. By that I mean you can type into these FMCs something that is clearly wrong, and the FMC will do it. Likewise, you can type into these FMCs something that is absolutely correct, but because of a database anomaly that you have no way of knowing about, it comes up with the wrong answer. You've got to check that work. It takes two people. That takes time. That task saturates the crew. Drop down a level. Reduce your workload. Keep your SA up. Another great example, it applies to you uh, flight guidance airplanes just as well as the FMC kind of people. And I, I bet every pilot in this room has seen this. I bet you have all seen this act. Watch. I'm out there doing one of my once a month turnarounds, you know, that I get to do. And, uh, and, and so I'm out there doing uh, one of those. I think it was a veil turnaround. In fact, Doug was on my jump seat watching, and, uh, and uh, we'd gone out the veil, and we're coming back, and we're doing one of those arrivals, you know, the... Uh, uh, coming in from the northwest at Dallas. They used to call it the Boyd's arrival. Now it's called the buoy arrival. And, uh, and it's a perfect day. I mean, it's beautiful. It's clear. The only kind of day I fly on. And, uh, 
And so we're, we're, roaring, we're roaring down the buoy arrival, which I have had programmed up in my FMC since Colorado Springs, you know what I mean? And everything's going perfect, LNAV, VNAV, perfect. And I'm coming down the buoy arrival, everything's synced up just great. I can see the airport up there out in the distance. I got everything in sight. I'm coming through 10,000 feet. I'm all programmed up for a one-way 1-8 right arrival, aren't I? Right? And as I steam down this thing, all programmed up for a 1-8 right arrival, I come through about 10,000 and start down for 9,000. Everything's still hooked up perfect. All of a sudden, the controller says, I knew you'd seen that before. The controller says, change your runway to 1-3 right. Well, I'm about 26 miles out. There's the airport. I can see that piece of pavement. And I extend that piece of pavement, I can see that line's right on my nose, i.e. I'm coming up on the final approach course, even though I'm 25 miles out, the final approach course now is right in front of me, isn't it? And so I look out there and see that, so watch this. From the highest level, LNAV, VNAV, boom, click, 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 straight to the lowest. Remember that stuff? I got it. There's the pavement. You know, you kind of turn yourself around, you sort of line up with that pavement, you know? <laughs> Remember that? Then you get all lined up with the pavement. Now, now listen, I, believe me, I am not faulting my co-pilot. I am not. We created him. Okay? My co-pilot goes, <laughs> I'm flying. You know, I'm turning around here. I'm saying, hey, would you put in the ILS for one three right? I could use the glide slope. You know, 1091, would you? You know, there's airplanes going over my head for 1-8 right. There's a guy right in front of me. I've got his, I don't have spacing on him now. I got stuff to worry about, don't I? Heads up stuff. It's probably not a good time to be typing. You know, I mean, let me ask you this. In that scenario, you know, there's the airport. Here's me, perfectly clear. What can the computer possibly bring to me that I don't already have? And that's the point. That's the point. You cannot multiply wealth by dividing it. Putting your head down, pushing buttons, creating dollars, trying to apply the same automation when all you have to do is just let the economy be. Let it, let it correct itself once in a while. Small little corrections. Because if you don't, you're going to end up in a very bad situation like it's been happening all over the world from his time till today you have Emirates on a 777 perfectly good airplane they had to go around he pushes the two little buttons to, to put the thrust to toga maximum power to go around the auto the automation doesn't do it he pulls in the stick stalls slams the airplane into the in, into Dubai runway okay perfectly good airplane why why? Because the automation didn't work. Fly Dubai, right? Snowy, icy day, holding forever in a day. Night flight, captain, first officer tired. They're going in for a landing, one last attempt before they divert because they didn't want to divert. Coming in, they push toga to take the airplane, flip it upside down, nose down, perfectly good airplane into the ground kills everybody children of the magenta okay asiana triple seven in san francisco coming in for a landing trying to captain is trying to hand fly 30 knots below his target airspeed his v approach speed airplane starts to descend 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 never once does, once does it occur to him he doesn't have enough power he doesn't react. He's thinking that the auto plane, the, the plane has auto thrust. It's going to start doing it by itself. First officer in the back, he's sitting there, straps himself in. He sees it, doesn't say a word. Why? Because in that culture in, in Korea, you're not allowed to tell anybody who is above your rank anything because you might embarrass him. So what happened to a perfectly good airplane? Boom, right into the pavement. Children of the magenta. And if you think that this is not going to happen in economics, that we're just going to have everything on autopilot, we're just going to do quantitative easing, we're going to do repos, we're going to print trillions of dollars, we'll never let the uh, the economy uh, 
you know, function properly, eventually it's going to lead to a crash. I'm telling you, it happens in aviation. It's it's going to happen in in the real world of economics. And you're going to see it, and then you'll remember me. And you'll probably be showing this video to your kid. Then, if I'm still alive, okay. I don't know if I'm going to die tomorrow. You never know these things, okay. Got to use appropriate appropriate automation for the task. Right? Sometimes we do need to print. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we need to use surpluses. But you'll never create value for a currency just because you print it. You're never going to create, uh, multiply wealth by dividing it. It's not going to happen. No government can do that. That's it. Take care. Bye-bye. Before this battle's over, the world will know that few stood against many. Yeah. Before this battle's over, the world will know that few stood against many.